Welcome back again, everyone. I'm Father James DeLucio. This is the third and concluding portion of my commentary on Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. That last upload on Facebook and YouTube got cut off because my uh, photography program just decided to stop. But I wanted to leave you with this and also to say goodbye properly. So this is part three, and here we go. Uh, one last thing about looking on the story of the disobedient son, the defiant son, the loving, forgiving, magnanimous father, representative of God, and the angry, angry, resentful brother, because let's face it, we're all so in tune to resentments. Uh, remember in the Sermon on the Plain, goes all the way back to Luke 6, Jesus is adamant, stop judging, stop condemning, forgive, and you'll be forgiven. So we see how central that is to the heart of a good relationship. The relationship of Israel with Torah, the relationship of us in, G in Jesus to God, celebrating the Holy Spirit. That's how we experience the Spirit. Um, Bishop Barron, you know Rich Bishop uh, Robert Barron, he's now the uh, Bishop of um, Rochester in Minnesota, and he has that Word on Fire ministry. He recently preached on last week's uh, gospel, happened to be Matthew, but it was about um, Jesus recognizing the good and saying to the evil people, I don't even know who you are, who are you? And he invites us that this isn't a matter of who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. It's a matter of waking us up that we need and want to be in good company with God. And in wanting to be in company with God, we have to stop the judgments on everybody else. We don't know their story. But we also have to be so trusting in God is love forgiveness. In one essence, we always have to be people of hope, hoping that the good is going to prevail, not only just for us and our friends or our group or our church, but that goodness is going to prevail in everyone for everyone, with everyone, and stop wasting our time on who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. Judgment is mine, it belongs, says the Lord. It belongs to God. So we still need to be in hope for everybody's conversion. And in terms of for those who don't know God, who don't know Jesus, we, we invite them for a conversion to Christ. And for those who already have their faith, we invite them as we keep inviting ourselves for ongoing conversion to a deeper sense of God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, for patient endurance, for handling all the difficult things, for empathy, for those who give in to temptation, because we do as well, and there we go, people of hope. Now for those Catholics who are into praying the rosary, you know this by that little, what they call the Fatima prayer that comes with every decade of the rosary. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. You see, you are articulating that very essence of exactly what I'm talking about, always hoping that people will get closer to God. And although it literally is about the afterlife. It's also about today. Save us from hell today. Save us from being filled with anger, filled with resentment, filled with hatred, filled with prejudice. God, help us because the temptation for that is so strong for everyone. So, that's the conclusion of all what I have to offer commentary on the prodigal son, the love forgiving father, and the angry brother. Thank you so much for joining me. You can see why I postponed this Luke Live to Wednesday. I really needed some more time. I hope you take some time to reflect on these and please get involved in the commentary. Share a thought, an objection, a resentment. You're welcome to. It's all good as long as we keep in conversation. God bless everybody. Have a wonderful day.